today we're going to go through variables and this is just a little review for you we're going to use an example experiment after we look at the definitions of the variables so just a review the independent variable you can only have one independent variable in an experiment and that's the variable that you're changing on purpose so you have to look at well when i'm looking at this experiment what is the thing that keeps being different that's your independent variable your dependent variable also known as the responding variable is going to be affected by the independent variable and it typically is the thing that you are testing or you're writing your results about sometimes they say it's the thing that is being measured then you have your controlled variables. Those are the things that must remain the same in an experiment. And these are things that you may have to measure before you start actually experimenting. That's where I think the confusion sometimes happens with the definition of the dependent variable. The controlled variables have to stay the same. It could be the size of something. It could be who is doing the testing and so forth. And so, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at an example experiment and identify these variables. And our example experiment is an experiment is set up to test which type of flowers, cosmos, sunflowers, or lavender, attracts the most bumblebees. So when we're looking at the independent variable for that experiment, we have to look for, well, what's different in that particular example. And it says type of flowers, cosmos, sunflowers or lavender and so right there you can see what's different cosmos sunflowers or lavender so the independent variable in this experiment is the type of flower be it cosmos sunflower or lavender so it's the type of flower that is what we are changing that is the independent variable the dependent variable is going to depend on that independent variable and what we're going to be measuring here, recording results are, is about the bumblebees. Which one attracts the most bumblebees? So we're going to be recording the number of bumblebees. So the dependent variable we can write as the amount of bumblebees, because when we write it down, we're going to say Cosmos attracted 10 bumblebees and Lavender attracted 33 bumblebees and so forth. Now, the most important variables in the experiment are sometimes the control variables because if you don't control everything you need to, your, your experiment results will not be valid. And so what I see students do is they kind of, sometimes they'll write down the control variables and then they'll completely ignore them. And sometimes they'll just not even worry about writing them down to begin with. Some examples of control variables in this experiment, well, are the type of bee. Bumblebees are certainly not the only type of bee out there. In fact, there's more than one type of bumblebee, but it would be really, really hard to tell which one's which. So you just go with the type of bee and you just count number of bumblebees. You also need to keep constant the location because that's gonna have a big impact where the bees are coming from and so forth. So that has to happen in the same location. You have to keep the time of day constant. You can't go and test the lavender in the morning and the sunflowers in the evening. The bumblebees come at different times of day depending on, on the bee and the type of bee and so forth. The amount of time. You can't look at the cosmos for an hour and only count the lavender for 30 minutes. You have to keep the amount of time that you're counting these bees constant for each type of flower. You also have to keep the season constant because bumblebees are only active in certain parts of the season. So if you're testing the lavender later in the season, you might not get fair results. The person who is counting, because the person who's counting is going to bring their own experience. You don't want to have me counting on the sunflowers because I know a pretty good deal about a bees and I would be able to pretty quickly identify all the bumblebees or have someone on like a little two-year-old counting the lavender because they're not going to know that much about bees and certainly they may not know which kind of bee they're looking at. So your person who counts has to be the same. The number of flowers, you have to have, you know, five sunflowers, five lavender plants, five co cosmos. It's not fair if you have a whole bunch of lavender and just one sunflower that that's there is immediately, you can't call those results valid. 
the type of day. So you can't count the sunflowers on a day when it's really windy and cold and the cosmos on a day where it's warm and sunny. You have to count them in the same type of day. You also have to keep your garden area similar. So you can't have like bunches of other plants around the lavenders that might also be attracting bees, but only have a garden of sunflowers because that there, it immediately makes it not valid. And the activities around the counting area. Oh, today, you know, there's a soccer game going on in the yard right outside. Well, that's going to affect what bees are interested in coming. It might disrupt their flight paths. So you want to keep the activities around the counting area constant. What the person is wearing, and I say this because there is some evidence that different colors impact the bees. And so if you're wearing yellow one day, well, bees kind of are attracted to the color yellow. So they may be more apt to come in that area than if say you're wearing red because bees don't really see red that well. So the next day you wear red and you're counting a different kind of flower that could impact that as well. There are certainly a lot more controlled variables that's just a very small group of them. There are more that are in my brain right now, but I want you to see, look at all those controlled variables. If we go back and we look at the dependent variable for the experiment, well, that's just simply, again, the amount of bumblebees. If we go back and look at the independent variable, the thing we're changing, that's the type of flower. So I want you to really think about when we are looking at experiments, start thinking, well, what am I changing? That's my independent variable. What am I going through and what am I trying to um, measure or record results? And that's your dependent variable. And then really, really importantly, what are all those things that I have to keep constant or control? Because without keeping all those things controlled, you're going to end up having experiments that are not valid.